Art International. It's one o'clock in the afternoon here in Moscow. You're with me, Katie Pilby. Welcome to the programme. Will Western powers agree to supply weapons to the Ukrainian army? That's been the main question during a head-to-head -head between the US President and the German Chancellor. Now, even before the meeting, there was speculation that the issue would divide the pair. Angela Merkel is insisting on a diplomatic push, while Barack Obama is still weighing the option of sending weapons to Kiev. Guy and H. Khan has more on the clash of interest between Germany and the U.S. No matter how hard the German and the U.S. leader tried to present unity of position over Ukraine in their joint news conference, differences came out. I've always said I don't see a military solution to this crisis. We should work towards a diplomatic approach. If, in fact, diplomacy fails, what I've asked my team to do is to look at all options. Uh, and the possibility of lethal defensive weapons is one of those options that's being examined. For the U.S., arming the Ukrainian government against the rebels is an option. For Germany, it's not. I discussed this with Gregory Copley, editor of Defense and Foreign Affairs magazine. There's been a, a strategic divergence between continental Europe and, and the and North Americans for some years now. Uh, and this is going worse. Certainly, Washington doesn't seem to understand Europe's existential needs for uh, relations with Russia in terms of energy and with, and, and with Central Europe uh, and Central Asia with regard to energy. So this divergence has been emerging for a long time. Uh, Chancellor Merkel and, and uh, President Hollande of France uh, are desperately trying to push the United States away from this highly rhetorical and confrontational position because they re recognize that it's fruitless. Uh, I would say uh, the United States is relying on uh, the United Kingdom and Poland and Lithuania, for example, to bolster its position saying that it's speaking for justice in Ukraine when really it's just trying to uh, get a situation where it can have a victory. For much of Europe, the question of arming the Ukrainian government in this conflict seems to be a question of whether to escalate the conflict or not to escalate. President Obama's spokesperson just last week admitted that sending weapons could increase the bloodshed. And yet, the U.S. Congress is pushing for sending arms. Some hawkish heads in Washington are pushing for that. And they seem to be successful in convincing President Obama that it is a viable option. In Washington, I'm going to check on RT. The German media are speculating about who's the key player in the Ukrainian crisis and who's capable of resolving it. Here's a little of a discussion that sparked during a talk show um, RT, R A R D channel. Well, it's wonderful that Europe is doing something, but it just won't work unless the US will be standing by with its strength, so Putin knows who he's dealing with. The US is not a neighbor of Russia, and this war is not happening in front of America's gate. Therefore, I would like to say it very clearly, this is a European problem, and America should take a step back. Obama's description of Russia as a regional power is false. So I'm asking myself, what is the reason of this provocation? The question is, who has the power? I mean, it is wonderful that Europe is participating, but at the end of the day, the power lies in Washington, and Putin knows that. Western mainstream media were quick to coin the phrase pro-Russian separatists in Ukraine, and now, courtesy of CNN, we have pro-US troops fighting there. If the United States arms the Ukrainians, that Russia will ratchet things up and it'll become a full-out war and then Russia won't stop. This comment suggests that the Ukrainian army is actually pro-US. The apparent slip-up was quickly ridiculed on social media, though. Twitter users were taken aback, saying they barely believed their eyes. Some called the CNN comment a Freudian slip. Others joked that it was the fail of the day. However, it wasn't the first U.S. revelation about the crisis in Ukraine. Last week, President Obama had something important to say. The protests in the Maidan and uh, Yanukovych then fleeing after we had brokered a deal uh, to transition power in Ukraine. For months, U.S. officials repeatedly stressed that last winter's power change in Ukraine was an expression of the citizens' free will. Now it turns out that the U.S. had handed it all along. 